So my name is Sarah Gabba. Um, I got involved in the Women's March, I think uh, it was on Thanksgiving break and I was poking around Facebook and it was obviously right after the election. Um, I'm sure a lot of us were just disappointed and just sort of apprehensive about what the next four years were going to shape up to look like. Um, and I had seen the people sharing the event for um, the Women's March on Washington. I think at that time it was still the 10,000 Women March or however they uh, in inappropriately worded it. Um, and then, you know, I s was thinking to myself where uh, that I was a women's studies major <laughs> and I was like, now's not the time to just kind of not get involved. Um, so I looked locally for a hub and those had already been set up in Portland. Um, and I located the Portland hub and I just put a post on there that said, how can I help? And that's how I found Erica. Um, and Erica said, she, I think the first part was that there was a meeting um, at uh, our Sally, another organizer had, has a space on Preble Street and she hosted um, you know, a meeting for people that wanted to get involved there. Um, and there were probably, probably eight or nine of us, I think, that had shown up. Um, and, you know, and we just sort of got to work at that point as to sort of how to direct people, how to get them down there. And I think, you know, what, everything was very amorphous. There wasn't a lot of like tasking where it was like, oh, this is what I'm doing and that was what I'm doing. So I just kind of dived in and said, if there's people with questions, I'll answer them. Um, if I have the knowledge, I'll share it. And we tried to just, it felt like air traffic control, like we were directing people um, to the answers that they needed to get to. How do I get down there? Where do I find a ride? Where are the buses? Um, all of that stuff. And then um, at some point, Erica brought me on to sort of help, you know, track all the buses, get people on the buses, find out how many people were going. And that was all over the state. So it was a big, <laughs> it was a big effort that the two of us had to do to get that done. I had booked my plane ticket to DC before I even had raised my hand to volunteer. Um, so, you know, I got a great deal on my ticket, so I kept it instead of taking the 20 hour bus ride that <laughs> seemed pretty, pretty tough. Um, and so we got folks down there. I think I sort of breathed my sigh of relief. I had already flown down to DC. Um, and so much was done on social media that we were still like following everything. And when I saw um, posts from all the girls in um, down at Whole Foods getting on the bus, I was like, okay, they're on the bus. I've done what I can do. Um, and so I felt pretty good by the time we got there. I said, they're getting to DC. <laughs> now they have to get back on the bus and that's their problem. Um, but we, that's when I sort of felt like we had really accomplished getting them somewhere. <laughs> I think that there were, uh, I think my theory was that there was more than 25 because I think there were so many that we didn't even have contact with. I mean, if we're just talking about all the people that we touched, there were 25 buses, but I would guess that there were churches that were organizing their own routes down there and, you know, just so many people just, you know, really organizing their own little bubble of, of people saying, you know, my close friends and I, we're going to rent a bus and we're going to go. Um, but I think that there were, you know, I think we counted probably three, 2,000 or 3,000 people on those buses around there. Um, we had arranged to um, meet the main contingent at the Hirshhorn Museum. Um, and, you know, everything was just hectic um, as far as planning at that stage. I mean, we had made all these plans, gotten the word out there to everyone that we were meeting there, and then um, and then the Women's March national organizers had said, no, don't meet there <laughs> because you, po you possibly won't be able to, to access the Hirshhorn um, and meet everybody. And then we were like, what are we going to do? And then we just decided it was too late. Um, we're going to try to meet people as close to the museum or near the museum as possible and um, just go from there. And we had woken up probably at like 4.30 in the morning um, from where I was staying. I was staying at my sister's in um, Frederick, Maryland. And we had gotten my nephew ready. I think one of my, um, one of my friends from college, his wife joined us as well. And so we got everybody up. We went to, um, 
obviously to Starbucks first to get some coffee. <laughs> and then, but we pulled into this Starbucks and there were just buses of people pulling into the Starbucks, you know, that were just overwhelming Frederick, Maryland, which is just a tiny little town um, already at 5.30 in the morning. And that's when I was like, oh no, there's a lot of people going. Um, and so we had, uh, went to the, to the end of the red line um, at Shady Grove Station. And it was, I mean, it was like the march was there. I mean, it was, there was a line from the outside of the tunnel to go in to buy a Metro pass. And then obviously that was crazy because there are you know, hundreds and hundreds of people buying Metro passes and trying to get through the, to the turnstiles. And then, but everything was so calm and civil at the same time. Um, which I've never been in a crowd like that. I've gone, you know, to a lot of concerts and crowded places, and you know, it was just really kind of somber and peaceful in the morning, where everybody was just like, okay, we'll just wait in line, and you're next. Go, <laughs> wake up, um, until everybody got through the turnstiles and on the on the subway, and it was just like that all morning, where it was just people moving to to a place, and there was not really any sort of, you know that hustle and bustle of people, you know, pushing or being rude. I mean, there was nothing like that. It was just everybody sort of with the same goal to get to get to the mall, which was very cool. Um, and so once we got there, we made our way pretty easily to the Hirshhorn. Um, and I met Erica there and she had maybe a couple hundred people with her um, waiting all in there. Blaze Orange, his main had chosen the, the Blaze Orange colors to try to find each other in a crowd. Um, and I'd say there, none of the buses had shown up at that point. They were all still trying to get through the traffic into DC. Um, and we, it was just impossible to figure out what was going on at that point because people were everywhere and going in every direction. I didn't even really understand where they were setting up the stage and where the, <laughs> I was just like, I don't know what's going on. There's people everywhere. And once you got out into the street, you couldn't even move. So we literally moved this crowd onto the street and we couldn't go anywhere. And so we had so many people who were like, let's walk them around the mall and try to like cut in further up. So maybe we can hear, you know, and you know, get in front of some of the monitors. And we marched them down the mall and we couldn't get over. It was sort of, it was kind of a cluster. <laughs> it was kind of a mess because we were just mar marching hundreds of people up and down the mall for a little bit. And then we, just decided to pull back in right in front of the Hirshhorn where we started um, and wait for people. But I think, you know, we were still, had led our people up and down the mall a couple of times and into the crowd and we were still getting word that the buses hadn't even parked at, at RFK Stadium yet. Um, and I don't think those folks got in until about noon or something like that. So, um, you know, we had really been there <laughs> since like four or five in the morning. Um, trying to get everybody organized and then it was just impossible. I think they ended up coming from the other side of the mall and couldn't, couldn't get across the crowd um, to meet the rest of us. But I think nonetheless we all had a, had a great day. I had, we had to, like I was saying earlier, um, I had my nephew and my sister with me and we, um, it got so crowded. Um, and he was such a little trooper, he's 10 years old, and we were like, we'll just, you know, go back because you couldn't move, you couldn't breathe. And we went back onto the mall um, that was still packed with people, um, but you could move a little freer. And so we took him back there and, I mean, just, I mean, people watched back there. There were still hundreds of thousands of people filling up the mall. Um, and you couldn't hear anything from, from the rally, you couldn't see anything. Um, it was chaotic. We didn't know if people were marching or if they were going anywhere. Um, but eventually we did, we, we hung around the mall for a little while um, and then saw the crowd sort of start to move. We fed my nephew lunch and we, it's when we saw them starting to move, we were like, let's just try to like join in with the flow of traffic and we like merged on. So we did get to march um, for a little bit uh, down the mall and went, got up to the White House. And my sign said, uh, this is what happens when you make nasty women angry. <laughs> and I think we got there to the, to the end um, at the White House before a lot of people uh, because they were just starting to put all the signs down. Everybody left their signs on the fence in front of um, the White House and we had sort of just gotten there at the beginning of it. Um, 
but I think it was just sort of an interesting feeling, I think, when you came to the end of it, where you were just standing there and you put your sign down and it was kind of like, there's a lot more stuff to do. <laughs> we have a lot more work to do um, than just today, because I think that whole from November to January was just, you know, I think I've never, I've always been on social media, but I've never been so immersed in it that I was like one of those people that was always on my phone. And I think like, I felt like I was just like looking up from my phone for the first time in months at the end of, at the end of that. <laughs>